Okay, might as well get this out of the way while we're at it. WWF Warzone released in 1998 for Game Boy, courtesy of Acclaim Entertainment, Probe Entertainment, and Crawfish Interactive. Basically the first game in the trilogy of wrestling titles on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color that also comprised WWF Attitude and ECW Hardcore Revolution. Two games that we've previously looked at recently. And uh, it's fitting we've saved this first entry for last because this is, without question, the worst game in that set of games. Which is, when you think about it, a good thing considering it can only go up from here and it eventually did with Attitude and Hardcore. It's not the worst WWF game on the Game Boy. WWF Raw is a thing that exists on the Game Boy and certainly takes the cake in that department. And in all fairness, Warzone is not that bad of a game, but clearly there are plenty of warts here that would get resolved in later games. One of which is the single solitary music track that plays throughout the entire game. And the sound effects are almost non-existent and barely audible over the music. Even if you were to turn the music off, there's not much left to listen to, so what up? Anyway, not gonna spend too much time on the feature set. You have close to a dozen-ish WWF superstars to choose from, a championship mode where you climb through the ranks to lay claim to the Intercontinental and eventually the World titles, a quick singles match, a tag team contest, and a steel cage match where you need to climb the cage to escape and win. Controls comprise an attack button and an interact button, which serves as a grapple, climbing turnbuckles, and some other extra bits. And at some point, you can execute your wrestler's signature move by initiating a tie-up, holding the special button, and using the D-pad, inputting a three-direction combination to execute your signature move. Which is probably the only holdover from the console versions, which used Mortal Kombat-style button inputs to execute special moves. Later games in the series would simplify this feature to a simple press two buttons at the same time, and that's a much better thing, as I always found the combination method of Warzone and Attitude to be somewhat cumbersome, and it certainly is that here. On the flip side, however, you could perform your finisher anytime you want, which actually surprised me because I was wondering how that worked. Attitude had this dot thing that lit up, which lets you know you could do your finish, and Hardcore Revolution had the super meter gimmick, but aside from the usual health meter, Warzone has this second meter that also goes down at times. I'm guessing some kind of stamina meter of sorts. I don't have the manual and none of the online facts available for this version of the game were of any help in deciphering this second meter, so I wondered how the finishes worked in conjunction with that, but really, you just beat your opponent up, you hit your finisher anytime you want. You could, you could theoretically do the whole match with just your finisher, and you could either pin your opponent or win via countout, or escape the cage if you're doing that in a steel cage match. So, <laughs> Control for the most part do work. They're responsive for the most part, though pinning sometimes not the most intuitive thing despite being a one button affair. Climbing things, tagging in your partner, timing your grapples and trying to pull off a move, that stuff works well enough, but trying to, to recover from a fall takes a while and most of your time on the ground is spent log rolling on the canvas. The AI tends to be uh, a bit on the relentless side, even on the easy setting. But at the very least, top rope moves have a limit to how far they travel. So you can get to the other side of the ring and they'll never reach you, which is the one thing Warzone did better than its successors. Imagine that. So going to this Warzone game after playing the two follow-ups, I was expecting more of the same in the graphical department, but no, this is a very different looking game. A tad nicer actually. The wrestlers are a little more detailed and a little bigger even. The arena is filled with people. The overall presentation is a touch better than even Attitude in its animated intro. However, while the wrestlers are bigger and arguably more detailed, they actually seem even more generic than what the later games in the series would provide. With some of them not even making an effort to resemble the WWF superstars they're supposed to represent. Suffice it to say, anyone who usually wears pants as part of their wrestling outfits, whether it be Undertaker or they either wear regular undies or they're wearing legless singlets. Which is, I don't know, it's something, but but, but the, it's like, it, they look alright, but they don't look like the people they're supposed to look like. I mean, hell, they were able to get the wrestler likenesses in the first WWF Superstars on Game Boy. So it is possible, but, but, but whatever, who cares? These games are old anyway. <laughs> Overall, WWF Warzone for Game Boy is not a particularly great game. 
be stretched to call it good or even okay, but it certainly is playable, it's not completely worthless. If nothing else, it provides the basis for two better wrestling games that would tweak the formula somewhat, and it's a much more playable game than Raw, I will give it that much. But other than that, it's merely a thing that exists, and if you want your attitude fix on Game Boy, just get WrestleMania 2000. It's a Game Boy Color game, but it is backwards compatible with the classic Game Boy, and it's simply a much better game, to be honest with you. So, yeah.